Hello everyone. Today we are going to study the first chapter from your book Flamingo. The name of the chapter is The Last Lesson by Alphonse Daudet. Before we start reading the chapter, let's know a little about the story's author and its historical background. Alphonse Daudet is the author of this chapter. Here you can have a look at Alphonse Daudet. He was born in 1840 and he died in 1897. He was a French novelist and short story writer. The last lesson, the story that we are going to read, is set in the days of the Franco-Prussian War, which was fought in 1870 and 1871. In this war, France was defeated by Prussia, led by Bismarck. Kindly note down. Prussia then consisted of what now are the nations of Germany, Poland, and parts of Austria. In this story, the French districts of Alsace and Lorraine have passed into Prussian hands. Read the story to find out what effect this had on life at school. So, we always have to keep the historical background of this chapter in our mind. So the historical background is that a war was fought between France and Prussia, and Prussia won that war. Prussia, in the past, was a country consisting of three modern countries, uh, that is Germany, Poland, and parts of Austria. This country doesn't exist now. Germany, Poland, and Austria—they are separate and independent countries now. So in this war Prussia defeated France as a result Germany or uh, the then Prussia captured two of its districts and imposed German rules and regulations there so this imposition of rules and regulations on French people caused a lot of troubles to the French people so the chapter that we are going to read highlights those troubles so let's continue reading the story here the story starts i started for school very late that morning and was in great dread of a scolding especially because m hamel had said that he would question us on participles and i did not know the first word about them Here, note down. I is Franz. Franz is the narrator of this story. He is a thirteen or fourteen-year-old boy who was going to school that day. So, one particular day, Franz was going to school in Alsace, and as he was going to school, he was in great dread. Dread here means he was. afraid of going to school because his teacher m hamel had given him a test on participles and franz the narrator didn't know anything about that test so we are continuing for a moment i thought of running away and spending the day out of doors so since franz was not prepared for the test he thought that he must not go to school instead he could go uh, to some where else and spend the day and then uh, go back home in simple words he wanted to bunk the school that day and there were other distractions also it was so warm and so bright the day that day was very warm and bright and the birds were chirping at the edge of the woods so you see friends could hear the chirping of the birds and he wanted to go into the woods to see the birds and there was another distraction in the open field back of the sawmill the prussian soldiers were drilling and uh, he wanted to uh, see the prussian soldiers drilling and it was quite interesting to watch them drill so it was all much more tempting than the rule for participles so you see all these things the warm day 
the chirping of the birds in the woods the prussian soldiers drilling behind sawmill kindly note down what is sawmill sawmill is a place where wood is cut into uh, logs or pieces or planks so he wanted to enjoy these uh, things but franz was a great boy right he did not allow those temptations to have effect on him instead he resisted those temptations here it is written i had the strength to resist and hurried off to school so he did not give in to the temptations and he overcame his temptations and he went straight to the school to attend his class let's continue reading the story so when i passed the town hall there was a crowd in front of the bulletin board for the last 2 years all our bad news had come from there the lost battles the draft the orders of the commanding officer and i thought to myself without stopping what can be the matter now so as friends continued to hurry towards the school on the way he passed by a bulletin board here you can see this type of situation people were standing and reading uh, something at the bulletin board so as he passed by the bulletin board friends wondered what could be the reason behind people standing there and reading something important and friends was a little worried why because all the bad news had come from that bulletin board uh, when france had been defeated the notice of the defeat had been put up on the bulletin board the draft means the new orders and uh, uh, the new orders were repeat, uh, repeated quite uh, regularly and the new orders were issued quite regularly so all those new orders were put at the bulletin board site and then friends thought what could be the reason now because they had received all the bad news one could receive but friends continued towards the school because he was already late so then as i hurried by as fast as i could go the blacksmith watcher note down a new name in the chapter watcher he was a blacksmith who was there with his apprentice note down this word apprentice apprentice is a type of trainee that is a person who uh, learns an art or skill from his master or from a skilled person that person is known as apprentice so watcher along with his apprentice was reading the bulletin board and when the blacksmith saw friends hurrying uh, by the bulletin board so in fun the blacksmith shouted behind friends this is what he said hey friends don't go so fast bub you will get to your school in plenty of time so you see friends didn't understand the meaning of what the blacksmith said but again friends was confused but he continued going towards the school because he was worried and this shows that friends had some great qualities in him he did not want to miss his school i thought he was making fun of me and reached m hamel's little garden all out of breath so friends did not pay any attention to what the blacksmith said he continued running towards the school and as he entered the school he found that he had reached m hamel's little garden which m hamel had been maintaining at the school and friends was all out of breath you see out of breath means he was panting panting means because of the running he was out of breath so usually when school began there was a great bustle kindly note down the word bustle bustle means a lot of activity whenever there is a lot of rush 
a lot of noise when people are busy uh so that is called bustle right so friends noticed something different at the school so usually that is on other days when he reached the school at the uh you see beginning time he found a lot of noise a lot of activity there but that morning there was no activity right and the school was quiet and this was something strange so on other days he could hear the sounds coming out of the school even in the street right uh, and those sounds were uh, the opening and closing of desks lessons repeated in unison in unison means together uh when small children recite their lessons together so that is called repeating their lessons together and uh, at that time the, the children used to be very loud but that day the children were quiet right and they were all serious so on other days the children would recite their lessons loudly with their hands over their ears to understand better and the teachers great ruler rapping on the table so here friends is talking about other days but that day no such thing was happening at the school but now it was all so still so here you see sign of exclamation friends was quite surprised or you can say he was quite shocked i had counted on the commotion to get to my desk without being seen but of course that day everything had to be as quiet as sunday morning so you see friends had got late so he had made a plan and what was the plan he had decided or he had made a plan that he would quietly uh sneak into the class taking the cover off the loud noise and the bustle he this is what he had planned but when he reached school there was no noise there was no activity going on at school though all the students and teachers were in their classes but there was pin drop silence in the school and you see friends had another situation to face and you will see what that situation was through the window i saw my classmates already in their places so this was the situation so when friends reached in front of his class he could see from the window that all the students were already at their seats and m hamel the their teacher kindly note down this m hamel word m hamel is the name of their teacher who taught them french language so he was also inside and he was ready to begin his teaching walking up and down with his terrible iron ruler under his arm and uh, the teacher was carrying an iron ruler in his arm uh, this was to uh, you see scare the naughty students kindly note down we are reading a story that has its background 150 years ago approximately 150 years ago and at that time iron ruler or sticks were allowed in the class but in the modern times this is illegal right teachers are not allowed to carry their iron rulers or any stick in their hands so you see friends now had to open the door and go in before everybody so you see friends felt embarrassed he felt ashamed this shows another quality of friends that he was a, a conscientious student who loved doing his work who uh, loved doing his work and who had some great manners so you see he was late and he was fel- feeling embarrassed and you can imagine how i blush here you see he blushed blush means he felt embarrassed and how frightened i was so you see he was very much frightened of his teacher 
His teacher had such a command over them. But nothing happened. And you see, Franz was again surprised. Why? Because M. Hamel didn't scold him, didn't shout at him angrily for being late. M. Hamel saw me and said very kindly, Go to your place quickly, little Franz. Here, you see, Franz, the name has come. Uh, once again, I am reminding you, the Franz name stands for Alphonse Dode as a child, right? So we were beginning without you. M. Hamel said him, Franz, come in, take your seat. And you have reached the class well in time. We were about to start. So I jumped over the bench and sat down at my desk. So you see, Franz felt relieved and he jumped uh, the desk and took his seat. Not till then when I had got a little over my fright. Note down the word fright. So when Franz became normal, that is when his emotion of embarrassment and when his confusion settled to normality, that is when he became normal, he started observing things which he had not been conscious of earlier. And then he saw that our teacher had on his beautiful green coat. So he observed that M. Hamel was wearing his best clothes and kindly note down the name of the coat, sorry, the name of the color of the coat, green coat. His frilled shirt, note down frilled, frilled actually is a decorative piece on clothing which was in fashion in the past. And the little black silk cap, he was also wearing his silk cap and they were all embroidered. Embroidered means some artwork, needlework done on uh, the shirt, the frills and the silk cap. And those clothes M. Hamel wore on special days such as in inspection days or on prize days. And besides, the whole school seemed so strange and solemn. And that day, friends noticed the entire school was looking strange and solemn. Kindly note down the word solemn. Solemn means something very serious. But the thing that surprised me most was to see on the back benches that were always empty, the village people sitting quietly like ourselves. Old Hosser with his three-cornered hat, the former mayor, the former postmaster and several others besides. So as friends became aware of the surroundings after overcoming his uh, initial nervousness, embarrassment, he noticed that there were many strange things in the class. First of all, he noticed the class was fully packed. That is, all the benches were occupied which usually remained empty. That is, on average days, the attendance in the class was quite low, but that day, attendance was full. So, he noticed that even old people who very rarely attended M. Hamel's classes, they were there. And uh, old Hosser was there and he was wearing his three-cornered hat. And then the former mayor of maybe Alsace was there and the former postmaster was there and there were several other uh, elderly people there. So everybody looked sad and friends also noticed that all of them had sad expression on their faces and Hosser had brought an old primer. Kindly note down what is a primer. Primer actually is a book of basics of any subject. For example, if we talk about primer of English, uh, we can say that a book having A, B, C and the entire alphabet, alphabet, it can be called the primer. So that book had been thumbed, note down again, thumbed. Thumb means the corner of the pages of the book were turned at the edges and he held it open on his knees with his great spectacles 
lying across the pages like this. So you see old Husserl had brought his primer that is the book of basics of French language, French alphabet and that book had the thumbed pages in it and uh, you see the book was lying on his knees and his spectacles were uh, spectacles were also on the book. While I was wondering about it all and when Franz was you see trying to figure out why the class was looking so different M. Hamel mounted his chair and then M. Hamel stood up he went towards his chair and sat and in the same grave note down the word grave grave here means serious and gentle tone which he had used to me said and this is what M. Hamel said after taking his chair my children this is the last lesson I shall give you the order has come from Berlin to teach only German in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine. The new master comes tomorrow. So this is your last French lesson and I want you to be very, very attentive. So this is what M. Hamel said. M. Hamel said that he was going to teach all of them for the last time as the order from Berlin had come uh, that French was to be discontinued from the schools in Alsace and Lorraine because these two districts had now been added to the German territory or you can say Prussian territory and now French was not to be taught at uh, the schools in Alsace and Lorraine so a new teacher was going to come and join the school to teach them German so uh, he appealed to his students to be very, very attentive and try to learn the best from their last French lesson. So what a thunderclap these words were to me. So note down the word thunderclap, thunderclap here means shocking. So this announcement that M. Hamel made, it was a shock not only to friends but to everybody. Oh, the wretches! That was what they had put up at the town hall. So the moment Franz heard this announcement, he realized everything. So he came to know why there was crowd at the bulletin board. So he came to know that uh, all those people standing near the bulletin board, they were actually reading this news, this order. And what was the order? From the next day onwards, French was going to be discontinued and in place of French, German was going to be taught. My last French lesson? Why? I hardly knew how to write. I should never learn anymore. I must stop there. Then, oh, how sorry I was for not learning my lessons, for seeking birds, eggs, or going sliding on the saw. My books that had seemed such a nuisance a while ago, so heavy to carry, my grammar and my history of the saints were old friends now that I couldn't give up. And M. Hamel too, the idea that he was going away, that I should never see him again, made me forget all about his ruler and how cranky he was. After hearing M. Hamel's announcement, all these thoughts flashed across Fran's mind, right? So he realized that now he could not learn French any longer, right? And he also realized that he had so much to learn. For example, he realized he didn't know how to read, how to write, and he didn't want that to happen. And he was very sorry. And you see, he also regretted not having paid much attention to learning French, right? Because instead of learning French, he was more interested in uh, finding birds, eggs, or going, uh, sliding on the Saar. Can you note down what is Saar? Saar actually is the river that flows near uh, those two districts of Alsace and Lorraine. 
friends also realized that the books that had seemed burden to him till then all of them assumed attraction for him he realized that the books that he didn't like he developed a liking for them uh, for example his grammar book the history of saints they appeared to be now friends earlier they didn't appear friend earlier they appeared as burden and very strange thing m hamel whom friends had never liked so much all of a sudden his thoughts towards m hamel changed he used to consider him cranky no down the word cranky cranky means crazy eccentric weird but now he felt that he didn't find him cranky weird and strange instead he he felt that he liked him and all these changes had been brought about by that announcement which m hamel had made and that announcement was that lesson which friends was attending that day was the last lesson it means his teacher m hamel was going away forever and this thought made friends feel pathetic sad and terrible poor man it was in honor of this last lesson that he had put on his fine sunday clothes and now i understood why the old men of the village were sitting there in the back of the room now friends understood the entire situation he found answers to all his questions he came to know why he was wearing the best clothes and why the people uh, even those people who did not attend the french class usually they had come to attend that class it was uh, because m hamel was going to leave the school forever and they had come to uh, bid him farewell that is they had come to say him goodbye and they had also come to thank him for all that he had done for them so it was because they were sorry too that they had not gone to school more it was their way of thanking our master for his 40 years of faithful service and of showing their respect for the country that was theirs no more so all of a sudden everybody had started feeling patriotic so they regretted that uh, they did not attend the french classes they regretted that they could not do anything for their mother tongue and they also regretted that they had not done enough to save their country uh, from the german soldiers and they had also come to thank m hamel because he had served them for 40 years so you see 40 years is a long time so uh, they they felt attached to him there was a bonding between them and all of them were very very sad including friends so while i was thinking of all this i heard my name called it was my turn to recite what would i not have given to be able to say that dreadful rule for the participle all through very loud and clear and without one mistake but i got mixed up on the first words and stood there holding on to my desk my heart beating and not daring to look up right so you see when all these thoughts were going on in friends mind m hamel made friends stand up and he put a question to him on participles and you see friends since he had not prepared for the test he did not know the answer to that question and this made him feel further sadder right he wanted to answer that question correctly as a last parting gift to his teacher but he could not give the answer and he just kept standing with his head drooping down and it made him feel very very bad right so his heart kept beating and he was you see feeling nervous he was feeling ashamed he was feeling sad he was feeling embarrassed so all these thoughts you see 
put a lock on his mouth that is he could not speak at all i heard m hamel say to me and then m hamel said something to friends i won't scold you little friends this is what m hamel said to him friends i won't scold you you must feel bad enough see how it is every day we have said to ourselves ba i have plenty of time i will learn it tomorrow and now you see where we have come out ah that is the great trouble with alsas she puts off learning till tomorrow now those fellows out there will have the right to say to you how is it you pretend to be frenchmen and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language but you are not the worst poor little friends we have all a great deal to reproach ourselves with so you see when friends could not answer m hamel's question so m hamel did not feel angry didn't get angry he instead uh, you see gave a very small lecture to friends and all the frenchmen sitting in that classroom so you see this is what he said he said he look as long as we had time we did not learn french we kept postponing learning of french right by saying it to ourselves that uh, we would learn tomorrow and now you see all of a sudden some change had come some change which was beyond their control and he said this was the problem with entire alsas it means the attitude of the people of alsas towards their country towards their mother tongue was not serious they kept putting off learning till tomorrow now their freedom to learn french had been taken away from them by the german soldiers now those german soldiers they would make fun of uh, the french people they would you see uh, they would ask them this question hey you call yourselves frenchmen how is it that even being french you can't speak and write your own language right so m hamel kind of criticized this poor attitude towards uh, the country and their mother tongues of the people of alsace and he you see further said that only friends was not uh, uh, to be blamed all the people living in alsace they were to be blamed right because they had all taken learning french very lightly so he he said that each one of them needed to reproach themselves reproach here means uh to f- to criticize themselves or uh, and find fault in their own wrong attitude your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn they preferred to put you to work on a farm or at the mill so as to have a little more money and i i have been to blame also have i not often sent you to water my flowers instead of learning your lessons and when i wanted to go fishing did i not just give you a holiday so here m hamel is analyzing the causes that led to the frenchman's downfall that led to the slow learning of french language so the parents were more worried about earning money right so they they encourage their children to go to uh, mills and farms to earn money instead of encouraging them to go to school to learn french and m hamel said he himself was to be blamed also why because whenever he wanted his garden flowers to be watered he sent his students uh, from the class to water those flowers and whenever he wanted to go fishing he gave them a holiday so these were the causes this showed their careless attitude toward their country and learning of their mother tongue and then from one thing to another 
M. Hamel went on to talk of the French language, saying that it was the most beautiful language in the world, the clearest, the most logical, that we must guard it among us and never forget it, because when a people are enslaved, as long as they hold fast to their language, it is as if they had the key to their prison. So after analy analyzing the causes of their slow learning and their downfall, M. Hamel talked about the beauty of the French language. He told his students that uh, French language was world's best language. It was the clearest language and had logic in it. And he appealed to them to guard this language. Uh, there was a reason behind guarding it because if they succeeded in guarding their mother tongue, they would definitely one day get the key to their freedom because freedom and the mother tongue, they were interconnected. Then he opened a grammar and read us our lesson. So here one thing to be kept in mind is that M. Hamel did not stop teaching even on the last day, right? If there were some other teacher, he might have given them uh, an off day. But M. Hamel was a very honest teacher, very true patriot. So he taught his children as much as he could. So I was amazed to see how well I understood it. All he said seemed so easy, so easy. So here, a very interesting thing, friends shares with us that day when he was, uh, you see, shocked and when he was emotional and when he had realized that he was learning French for the last time, he found his learning abilities to be the best. That is, he realized that on other normal days, he found hard concepts you see of the language difficult to understand but that day even the concepts that appeared hard he was learning very easily he understood each and everything that M. Hamel taught him so you see with just a little change in the attitude with just a little more seriousness uh, one can understand or one is at one's best learning ability right and that he had never explained everything with so much patience. And that day, even M. Hamel was teaching in the best possible manner. On other days, uh, he was, uh, you see, just a normal teacher. But that day, he was the best teacher. He was teaching with patience. And he was, you see, teaching uh, with the best of his abilities. It seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and to put it all into our heads at one stroke. So you see, it appeared that day M. Hamel wanted to teach all the knowledge he had about French language to his students, right? So after the grammar, we had a lesson in writing. So after the grammar, he taught them writing skills and that day M. Hamel had new copies for us written in a beautiful round hand. France, Alsace, France, Alsace. So M. Hamel had brought <clears throat> gifts for his all students. He had, you see, brought copies for each one of them. Uh, and uh, on, on those notebooks, he had written these two words, France, Alsace, France, Alsace. So he wanted these copies to be given to his students as a last gift from his side. They looked like little flags floating everywhere in the schoolroom, hung from the rod at the top of our desk. So you see, those notebooks, those copies, they were looking like French flags, which were lying on each desk. So you ought to have seen how everyone set to work. And that day, every student worked very sincerely. And how quiet it was. And everybody was quiet. The only sound was the scratching of the pens over the paper. So you see, the only sound that could be heard in the class that day was the writing of the pen on the paper. So the once some beetles flew in and you see, uh, when the teaching was going on, a beetle 
flew inside the classroom but nobody paid any attention to them so nobody paid any attention to that beetle not even the littlest one even the you see youngest children who are likely to be distracted easily they did not pay any attention to those beetles who worked right on tracing their fish hooks and if the same beetles had come on some other day so those children might have caught those beetles and they must have you see uh, played with them uh, touching them touching their hooks as if that was french too so on the roof the pigeons cooed very low and outside on the roof the pigeons were cooing cooing means they were making their uh, sound and they they were also you see quite low and i thought to myself and you see when friends heard the cooing of the pigeon friends thought will they make them sing in german even the pigeons so friends just asked uh, himself he will the german people compel the pigeons to sing in german so uh, it is a kind of you see uh, fun he made or critical or thought he had about the german that how could they be so merciless uh, to impose their language thoughtlessly on uh, french people who had never ever learned german so how could they adjust uh, learning to german so whenever i looked up from my writing i saw m hamel sitting motionless in chair and gazing first at one thing then at another as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little school room so you see franz was uh, doing his work sincerely but now and then he would raise his head and look at m hamel and whenever he saw m hamel m hamel was looking you see here and there in towards the walls of the class it was appearing as if he was trying to fix the memory of the classroom in his mind uh, because he had worked in that school for 40 years fancy see it i imagine for 40 years he had been there in the same place with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him just like that so you see imagine this teacher this m hamel had you see stayed in that school for 40 years net and now all of a sudden he had been asked to leave that school how difficult it must have been for him how painful it must have been for him only the desks and benches had been worn smooth the walnut trees in the garden were taller and the hop vine that he had planted himself twined about the windows to the roof so you see uh, the trees that he had planted uh, so long ago they uh, they had become so tall and the hop vine that he had planted had also risen to the roof from the ground how it must have broken his heart to leave it all yeah so friends was wondering ki how painful it must have been for uh, m hamel right because a person when he uh, spends 40 years of his life at a place when he is asked to uh, or when he is compelled to go away from that place uh, he has an attachment with that place and when that attachment is uh, cut or severed so there is pain in one's heart so same pain was being felt by m hamel right so to hear his sister moving about in the room above packing their trunks and you see just above the classroom where friends was uh, sitting uh, was the room of m hamel and m hamel sister uh, was packing their luggage and uh, the noise was coming uh, you see inside the class uh, so everybody was uh, wondering again ki even the m hamel sister must have been feeling painful because she was packing up she had also stayed there for 40 years for they must leave the country next day and 
they were packing up why because they were supposed to or they were ordered to leave that place next day but he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very last after the writing we had a lesson in history and then the babies chanted their ba baby bo boo so down there at the back of the room old hosser had put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands spell the letters with them you could see that he too was crying his voice trembled with emotion and it was so funny to hear him that we all wanted to laugh and cry ah oh, how well i remember it that last lesson so you see m hamel in spite of be feeling so much of pain of separation from uh, from the school or from the place where he had spent uh, most of his life he had the courage you see in spite of feeling painful he had the courage to teach his children and after the writing lesson he taught them history and then the babies chanted their ba baby bo bu so i think these perhaps are french vowels french sounds french vowel sounds so uh, down there at the back of the room so old hosser who had kept his primer on his knees earlier had picked up his primer and put on his spectacles and he was trying to learn the french alphabet and he tried to spell the french letters or the french words and when he was doing so he was crying why because he was also in pain because m hamel was leaving them and he was uh, uh, you see his voice was uh, shaking and trembling and you see he was crying and trying to say the french sounds alphabetical sounds or the french phonetic sounds and when he was crying and saying the phonetic sounds of the french alphabet uh, he was appearing to be quite funny and people just wanted to laugh and cry laugh because old hosser's voice was sounding so funny and they wanted to cry because everybody was feeling emotional on account of the new order ah uh, how well i remember it that last lesson and friends you see remembered each and everything that he learned in that last lesson because friends was also very emotional all at once the church clock struck 12 then the angelus at the same moment the trumpets of the prussians returning from drill sounded under our windows m hamel stood up very pale in his chair i never saw him look so tall so here kindly note down this word angelus angelus actually in roman catholic church is the evening prayer right so the morning the uh, afternoon and the evening prayers they are called angelus so you see when all these things were going on inside the classroom outside the church bell struck 12 and it was uh, the prayer time also and at the same moment the prussian soldiers who were drilling nearby they started blowing their trumpets right and these were the indications that the school time was over so when m hamel heard the church bell the angelus and the trumpets he became very nervous and pale you see because it was the last moment now was the time to say goodbye forever to his beloved students to his beloved school and maybe to his country so when m hamel stood up he looked so tall kindly note down here tall uh, looking tall is a metaphor it means he looked so great and he looked so uh you see magnanimous he looked so uh, uh so honored he looked such a respectable figure so this is what m hamel said my friends said he i i 
but something choked him he could not go on so m hamel when he tried to say the last words to his students he could not speak because he was overwhelmed with emotions he was choked so then he turned to the blackboard since he could not speak he wanted to say something to his students so he took a piece of chalk and wrote something on it and bearing all on with all his might he wrote as large as he could vive la france right so he wrote these three words on the board here you can see these words mean long live france and then he stepped and leaned his head against the wall and without a word he made a gesture to us with his hand and these were the last words he said school is dismissed you may go so since m hamel was feeling so emotional he could not speak so he began crying standing against the wall and then he collected his strength and said these uh, words my dear students the school is dismissed you may go and that's it the chapter is over thank you very much for watching thanks a lot and i hope you will uh, listen to the chapter again if you require further understanding and whenever you have any doubt you can uh, listen to the chapter again thank you very much Thank <laughs> you.